Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss the closing process. We will compare the closing process to a sports team. Just like a sports team finishes a season by wrapping up its activities, an accounting period ends with the closing process. What do we close? We close temporary accounts, revenues, expenses, and dividend. Don't worry, we're gonna go over the steps separately, step by step. Don't worry about this. These accounts are like scores and stats of the season, important for that season, but do not carry into the next season. Let's talk about revenues. Think of revenues as points, scores, wins during the season, as well as losses, just points. At the end of the season, the total points, the total revenues are recorded, then reset to zero for the next season. Think of expenses are like cost, energy, effort, spent during the season. These two are totaled at the end of the season, then reset. The team prepares for a new start. When they start again, they start from zero. Think of dividend as bonuses given out to players. Once you distribute the bonus to the players for that period, for that season, the next season, you reset those bonuses down to zero. And what's gonna happen? At the end of the period, all these temporary accounts are closed. Now, their balances and accounting, they're transferred to something called retained earnings, which we'll see in this recording. The season's final score for the team are added to their historical record. So this record shows the cumulative performance of that team over time. But every year, they reset to zero and don't carry forward for the next season, just like revenues, expenses, and dividends will not carry to the next period. With the old season behind us, the team is ready to start again fresh with new games, new goals, new winnings. Same thing in accounting. After the closing process, all the temporary accounts will go down to zero. We will see that. We'll see it step by step. And we're ready to start again our business process regarding revenues and expenses. We wrap up this by working a multiple choice question. And during the closing process, we go over four steps. Make sure you understand the steps, which is closing revenues, expenses, income summary, and dividend. Make sure you understand those four steps. Let's go ahead and dive into the closing process. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true-false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by defining the closing process in accounting. Well, the closing process is a series of steps, specifically journal entries, that we journalize at the end of the accounting period, whatever that accounting period happens to be, to prepare for the next accounting period. Simply put, there are certain accounts we need to close. That's what the closing process is about. What are these accounts? Well, we're gonna figure out the accounts. But here's what I want to tell you about the closing process. I'm gonna give you an analogy. Think about going on a trip. Here's what you do. You set your odometer to zero, your car odometer, then you drive your car to determine how many miles or kilometers you drove for that trip. Once you get to your destination, for example, this is trip one, then you want to go for another trip. You would reset your odometer down to zero. Let's assume you drove 250 miles. Then once you start your second trip, this is trip two, what you need to do, you need to start at zero to figure out how many miles or kilometers you travel the next trip. So this is basically the analogy that I can give you about the closing process. There are certain accounts we need to reset to zero. Now the question is, which accounts do we need to reset to zero? Those accounts are called temporary accounts. Now, what are they? Temporary means what? Temporary means these accounts don't stay with us from period to period. But let me ask you some logical questions, and I want you to 
think about them and we will determine which accounts do we need to close if I ask you this year or last year if I ask you last year how much profit did you make the prior year what do you do to figure out your profit the prior year you count all your revenues minus all your expenses to come up with your profit that's your prior year if I ask you what is your profit the current year well what you do you count your revenues minus your expenses to figure out your profit or your loss for that matter but here's what I need to tell you what's implied in my computation is this last year revenue was not counted in the current year last year expenses what was not counted in the current year what does that mean it means the revenues and the expenses from year to year we don't carry them because if I want to know my profit from last year I only have to figure out my revenues and my expenses for that year when I start the current year I reset everything down to zero so temporary accounts I just told you revenues and expenses are temporary accounts also if I ask you how much money did you took out in form of dividend how much money you took out for personal use let's assume last year you took a thousand dollar this year you took two thousand dollar well those amounts are different the thousand dollar belong to the prior year and the two thousand dollar belongs to this year so those accounts you account for them separately from year to year well I just told you revenues expenses and dividend are permanent accounts and we close them every year to make sure these accounts start with a zero balance the next period. Well, let me choose another account. Let's assume I have cash. Not assume, we always have cash. And let's assume for the sake of illustration, the company will have $15,000 cash in the prior year. When they start the current year, would they say, well, since we are starting the current year, we should start with zero cash? And the answer is absolutely not. If you have $15,000 in cash, you want to carry the $15,000 to the current year because cash will not go away. Let's assume you have accounts receivable $5,000 worth the prior year. Well, do you say, well, since this is a new period, I need to reset my account receivable down to zero? Well, the customers would love it. The people that you did work for and they haven't paid, they would love if you reset your account to zero. You will not do that. You will keep this account open to this year. So you will start with 5000 And this applies to all assets. Same thing applies to liabilities. If you owe, if your account's payable is $3,000 the prior year, this year, when you start this year, it has to be 3000 It can't go away. You cannot tell your creditors, well, I'm starting my new accounting period. Well, I have to reset the account down to zero. You can't do that. So what, we, what we're saying is assets and liabilities are not temporary. What are they? You guessed it. The opposite of temporary are permanent. Permanent accounts are also known as real accounts. These accounts carry their balances over one accounting period to the next. They stay with us from year to year, unlike the temporary accounts, which are closed out at the end of the period. Permanent accounts are not closed and are included on the balance sheet. So to make it easy for you, to make it easy for you, just remember this. Which one are the permanent accounts? I hope you know what, what's a balance sheet. Assets are our, our, our real account liabilities and equity and within equity we have we're gonna have common stock and we're gonna have the mother of all permanent account retained earning and you're gonna see why I said this retained earnings is the mother of all permanent accounts so simply put what are the permanent accounts those are the balance sheet accounts that's it that's all you have to know and everything else is what temporary what's everything else revenues expenses dividend and I'm gonna go a step further gains and losses you don't have to worry about this for now but in intermediate accounting you have to learn about gains and losses those are also temporary because they're they are not a balance sheet account now let's take a look at the steps in the closing process steps means what exactly how do we carry the closing process there are four steps to be more specific four steps
I'm gonna take you through each step separately. And guess what? We will work an example using the same company that we prepared in prior recordings. First, we're gonna close revenue accounts to income summary. We're gonna close the credit balance and revenue accounts. Why? Because revenues will have a credit balance. So how do we close revenues? We debit. We debit revenues. Hold on a second. I think I told you not to debit revenues. Well, guess what? Now it's the time to debit revenues. So revenues are debited when they are closed down because you need to bring them down to zero. We're going to debit revenues and we are going to credit an account called income summary. Now, what is this account? Well, this is a temporary account. We're just going to create this account. Then we're going to get rid of it. We're going to credit income summary with the total of all revenues account. So this is the revenue account. You might have, for example, let me choose a different color. You might have, let's assume, $3,000 in revenues. What do you do? You debit the account to bring the balance down to zero. So this is the closing debit. When you debit, what do you need to credit? You need to credit income summary. So basically what you did is you transferred the revenue you transfer the 3000 from the revenues to income summary. Now, revenues is down to zero and we transfer the 3000 to income summary. So this is step one. You close your revenues to income summary. Step two, you close your debit balances and expenses to income summary. Remember, expenses, they have a debit balance. What do you need to do if they have a debit balance? You need to credit each expense for its balance. And what do you do? You debit income summary. So let's take a look at expenses. Let's assume for the sake of illustration, you have $500 of expenses. What do we need to do? We need to credit. This is the adjusting entry. We need to credit expenses and transfer the account to income summary. So this is step two. Now expenses are zero. Well, what's the third step? The third step close this income summary account, this temporary account I just created, close it to retained earnings. First, you need to know what the balance is. The balance right now, if we have 3,000 of credit, 500 of debit, the balance is 2,500. And really this balance, you can call it net income, the difference between your revenues and your expenses. Now we need to reduce this account to zero. If the income summary has a credit balance, which it does have a credit balance indicating net income, debit the income summary and credit retained earnings. Well, if it has a debit balance, it means we had a loss, it means we have more expenses than revenues, credit the income summary and debit retained earnings. Here we have scenario one. You cannot have both scenarios. What I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to change colors. Now I'm going to close income summary. And since I have a gain, I'm going to debit income summary and close it to retained earnings. So that's the entry. And what I did just did, I just closed income summary and I transferred the balance to retained earnings. So notice revenues and expenses are first closed to income summary. Then I closed income summary to retained earnings. What does that mean? It means all revenues and expenses, the net amount is transferred to retained earnings. Could, could have I transferred everything automatically to retained earnings? Yes. In some textbook, in some CPA review courses, that's what they do. They close revenues and expenses right into retained earnings. That's fine. That's also fine. That's also fine. So what else can you do? You can credit this account 3000 debit this account 500 You have in here 500 increase. The same thing. We did it step by step to show you the closing process because oftentimes we take this intermediate step to keep track of our income summary separately of our net income. We're not done. There are four steps. The last step is close dividend to retained earnings. Dividend will have a debit balance. So what do you do if you have a debit balance? You credit the debit balance and you, you, you transfer the number to retained earnings. So if you have 500 of dividend, what do we do? We credit dividend to close. We, we credit dividend, we debit retained earnings. Now we reduce retained earnings from, from, from 2,500 to 2,000. Now retained earnings is 2,000. And what we did is we went through the closing process step by step. Now, so revenues and expenses are transferred to income summary. Income summary is transferred to retained earnings. Dividend is transferred to retained earnings. So revenues, expenses, and dividend 
we are starting with a zero balance and older numbers are factored into retained earnings. And this is why I said retained earnings is the mother of all permanent accounts. What I meant by this is all the temporary accounts are closed into retained earnings. It absorbed all the retained earnings. Now, for the sake of illustration, I'm going to perform the closing process on this trial balance and specifically on the income statement account and dividend. So I'm going to go step by step and close this. On the next slide, I'm going to have a the income summary account. I'm not going to have the dividend. We know we already have 500 of dividend. I'm going to show you step by step how, I'm, how am I going to perform these steps. What's a step one? Close revenue to income summary. It means I'm going to debit my revenue account. I have 9,200. I'm going to debit this account. I have 200 of rent revenue. I'm going to debit this account and I'm going to credit income summary the total 9,400. Step one is done. This is step one. Step two, close expenses to income summary. I have 800 of salaries. I'm going to credit this because those those are debit balances. Rent expense 1,200. That's gone. Supplies expense 2,000. That's gone. Insurance expense 100. That's gone. Depreciation 333 gone. And utilities gone. I credited all these accounts. What do I debit? Income summary. I debit income summary for the total happens to be 4,651. Debit income summary. Credit income summary 9,400. Now I have an income summary balance of 4,749. And this is the same balance as net income. Now, what do I need to do? I need to close this income summary. Where do I close income summary? I close income summary to retained earnings. Since I have net income, I am going to reduce income summary and, and increase retained earnings. I'm going to debit income summary. So I'm going to debit income summary 4749 to bring it down to zero, to bring it down to zero and credit retained earnings, increase retained earnings by 4749. And basically assuming retained earnings is zero, I credited, notice here, I debited income summary, transfer the account to retained earnings. And the last step is to close dividend. I'm going to reduce the dividend, credit the dividend, and debit, reduce retained earnings by 500. Now my retained earnings started at zero. I increased it with my net income. I reduced it by my dividend. And my ending retained earnings is 4,249. Now, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to list all my accounts that survived the closing process. And we call these accounts permanent accounts. Those are the permanent accounts. This is the post-closing. Post-closing trial balance, it means the trial balance that survived after we performed the closing. So what survived? Well, told you what would survive. Assets would survive. Liabilities retained earnings and common stock and we list these accounts by their normal balance and the total debits should equal total credits now what happened to revenues and expenses do they exist yes they still exist but they all have zero balances to start the next period so what happened to these revenues expenses and dividend what happened to them they're all are absorbed through the retained earnings account the retained earnings account absorbed them, absorbed them. Very important. Retained earnings is very important. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A company is reviewing its balance sheet accounts at the end of the fiscal year. They need to ensure that all temporary accounts have been closed. Which of the following is a permanent account that should remain open? Very simple, straightforward example. Do you know your permanent versus temporary accounts? You know, now you might be saying, well, this is simple. Well, yes, it is simple. If you know which accounts are permanent, which account are temporary, it is a simple process. But don't underestimate this knowledge. Why? Because in accounting, in future years, we have to make adjustments. If we made an error, if we made a mistake, if a fraud was committed, if an accounting, uh, accounting application was misapplied or misinterpreted, we have to make corrections. Well, knowing which accounts are permanent, which accounts are temporary will make a difference in which accounts, whether we can go back and open this account, it's, is it still permanent or we need to adjust retained earnings. So it's a very important concept, but let's see if we know the difference. Which account are permanent? Which account are permanent? Remember what I told you, the shortcut, 
any account that's, that goes on the balance sheet is a permanent account. And this is going to get more complicated down the road because down the road, we're going to have unrealized gain, unrealized losses versus realized gain and realized losses. So knowing which account are balance sheet account makes a difference to your understanding of the whole process. So don't underestimate this knowledge. But let's answer this question. Revenues, is this a balance sheet account? No, out. Utilities expense, is this a balance sheet account? No, expenses and revenues are income statement. Dividend, is this a balance sheet account? No, this goes on the retained earnings, not balance sheet. Accounts receivable by process of elimination. Yes, accounts receivable is an asset and it's a balance sheet account and it's a permanent account and it should remain open. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs additional questions that's going to help you whether you are a financial accounting students a cpa exam candidate a cma exam candidate just take in this for professional development invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe